Robbie Stewart's prisoner of war outfit. Robbie and his pilot Dave were shot down by a ground-to-air missile during a low-level night attack on Al Talil airfield. Just as Dave started to turn, I pumped out some chaff just to sort of try and decoy the missile away, but obviously it didn't. It didn't hit too close. It hit, I think, slightly further forward. That's why mm. Dave was knocked unconscious. But I was a little bit safer further back, so I was fully aware at that stage. So I pulled a handle. I knew we were going to go in further than this, and it's a tremendous kick, a tr really big whoosh. From that, I can't remember a thing. Dave was knocked unconscious by the blast, but Robbie managed to eject both Dave and himself at a height of about 200 feet. When I woke up, I was lying on the ground with my parachute just billowing in the uh, soft, warm wind. Robbie came to the following morning, having been knocked unconscious by the ejection and found that he was seriously injured, having suffered a badly broken leg, broken collarbone and compression injury to his back. Unable to move, he attracted attention by firing a mini flare. A lorry stopped and he was picked up and taken to an interrogation centre, where despite his injuries, he endured the first of many beatings and interrogations of his incarceration. Following the liberation of Kuwait, arrangements were made for the return of prisoners of war. On the day before their release, in an effort to hide the torture and poor conditions that they had suffered, the Iraqi authorities issued Robbie and his fellow prisoners their first change of clothing. This yellow prisoner suit, and a pair of sandals which replaced the plastic bags he had worn on his feet for the past six weeks. Robbie had lost so much weight that he had to fashion a pair of braces out of his bandages to stop his trousers from falling down. Just one of 100 reasons to visit the Royal Air Force Museum this summer. <laughs>